Okay, so I have two things I want to say today. One being the hair, two being K-pop drama related. First, I'm gonna start with hair. Well, I have cut my fringe on Sunday, or as you Americans call it, bangs. Now you can see my eye, and I think I did a pretty good job of it. And also in my last video, I've told you guys that I've dyed my hair using Prettier Chiffon Beige, this box. And I'm gonna give a very, very quick and vague review of it. Simply because it was my first time using it, and I used a different form of dye before using this. Let me explain. Basically, I can't give you an accurate review of this is because my hair was dyed in Vietnam previously in a salon and it wasn't foam dye and this was a golden brown color with highlights. And being golden brown, it tends to be a warm color, a warm toned brown. And chiffon beige is kind of a cool toned yellow. So basically, the cool tone of chiffon beige neutralized my golden brown hair Yellow refined my highlights. However, as you can see, there is a difference in color. It's like golden brown here. It's like a warmish color here, very vibrant. And then the roots, which I've dyed using Prettier, looks ashy. And whilst the roots of my hair, which I've dyed Prettier with, looks darker and doesn't really look like golden brown at all. So I don't really recommend Prettier Chiffon Beige for those people who have dyed using a different colour that is warm toned and of a liquidy cream formula. Whatever, I'm going to give you the good points and the bad points now of Prettier Foam Dye. Basically, Prettier Foam Dye is very, very, very easy to apply, as well as very, very, very easy to wash off. Also comparing to Pulte, Prettier is slightly better for me because I have very thin and sparse hair and whenever I use Pulte, a lot of my hair would come out after dyeing simply because it uses a comb and it's of a cream formula so when I comb my hair while dyeing it, it kind of pulls out the hair and when I'm washing the dye off, my hair starts to feel rough and grungy and then tangled and everything and more hair comes out when I try to untangle it. Whereas Prettier Foam Dye, it kind of forces you to have to massage it very carefully so that you don't tangle your hair. And because you don't need a comb applicator for this hair dye, but only your fingers to massage the foam and form more foam, it doesn't pull your hair out like crazy. And when you wash your hair, it's very easy to wash out compared to Pulte. My hair didn't feel as grungy as it did when I used Pulte. There wasn't much of a change in texture when I dyed my hair with this. Maybe it felt a bit more softer after I used the leave-in conditioner. Note, the leave-in conditioner was great. The hair feels so soft and nice. And another good point is that it appears to give you a very even coverage as long as you massage your hair continuously until lots of foam form. Don't massage your hair until the foam bubbles are gone. Just keep doing it until you see enough foam on your hair and then you're done. This hair dye is great for people with virgin black hair since it gives you that subtle darkish brown colour with chiffon beige like this. So if you don't really want a dramatic effect and it's your first time dyeing it, I would highly recommend this. Though I can't really say for myself that this gave me an even coverage simply because my hair has been already dyed. But I'm going to assume that it gives you great coverage simply because I haven't really seen a patch of black roots left on my head. Now the bad thing about Prettier, it's incredibly smelly, like the fumes are incredibly strong. So I recommend you guys to dye it in a well ventilated area, as the instruction manual already says. It's not great for those who have already dyed their hair using a cream formula and it's a very vibrant colour and it's a completely different colour to the foam hair dye that you're dyeing. But if you really want to use the foam hair dye then I advise you guys to pick a colour that's the same toned colour as your hair colour and try to use a similar colour to your previous hair colour. Basically I should have used milk tea brown so I have wasted chiffon beige. Moving on, Secret Freaking Garden ended on Sunday. I just watched the last episode yesterday and I feel incredibly sad right now. Not because the ending was sad, simply because it's over. There's no more episodes. I really wanted to see Sun paired up with another character, like a male character maybe, but then again South Korea wouldn't really like that, would they? Meh. Then again, I still have a few complaints about the last episode. I'm just gonna talk about one of them and you can read the rest all in my blog. 
Okay, so you know the whole relationship between Oscar and Sul. Yeah, when Oscar proposed to Sul, he said after 15 years of like meeting her and dating her and stuff, he finally proposes to her. Now if you think about it, most of the series was based on when Oscar was like 35 or something. He was like one or two years older than Juwon. And then the drama moves on to five years later on the last episode. And he proposes to Sul. Yay! But thinking about it, if you add five years to his previous age, which I've mentioned was 35 or 36, he's basically 40 years old when he's proposing to Sol. He is pretty old to be proposing to her. But that's just my view. Overall, I love the drama. I love the ending. It was incredibly sweet how they flash back in time to actually say, no, their first meeting wasn't at the filming set, but way back. Like, back to the funeral. Anyway, now the only Korean drama that I'm watching currently is Dream High, and it's completely ridiculous compared to Secret Garden. I wouldn't say Dream High is better than Secret Garden, because Secret Garden is clearly better. But I'm just watching Dream High because I love IU and Wu Young's characters in it. They are just simply amazing. I just wish they had more screen time. So yeah, I think that's all for today. Bye!